Welcome to this episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today I got Jay Dobbins. You know, now we didn't help ourselves by by the infighting that took place. Um, but you know, in the end, like fair is fair, and the system the system worked as it's designed to. Um, it, like from my perspective, if you can't convince a jury beyond a reasonable doubt that that person is guilty of whatever the allegation is you're making against them, then they should go free. Yeah. Exactly. The system, the, the system works. And the feds have a 98% conviction rate, so I don't know, man. It sounds like it just fell apart, like they were well, you like know, you like said, the case fell apart, and like, And I was a very easy person to blame for it falling apart. Um, because I was on the point, I was the lead of the undercover team. So it's easy to say, oh, this dude was dirty. This dude was corrupt. He That's pushed it too far, right? He pushed it too far. Um, were there days where I like, I like, I went too far? Man, over the course of two years, man, there's things that I, that I said that I shouldn't have said. There's things that I did that I shouldn't have done. None of those things ultimately would have impacted a successful or unsuccessful prosecution. They were they were just elements that that, that needed to come out. Um, but the, the 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 true explanation, the true depth of why that investigation, the prosecution of it, turned out to be something less than it either could have been or should have been. Um, that really doesn't sit on my shoulders. Um, I like I did my job the way I was supposed to, but the people who were responsible for letting it blow up, like I was a very convenient scapegoat to just say like, hey, blame it on him and let's walk away and, and try again. So now after this investigation is completed, they go to court and things, what happens next? Do Are you getting threats from people? Like, Well, during the legal process, um, like we said, like the accused, get to face their accusers, you know, in, in our court system. So they they learned that Jay Bird Davis, the gun runner, uh, the debt collector, the hit man, was counterfeit, man. And he was actually Jay Dobbins, an ATF agent. Well, a tiger doesn't change his stripes. It's not all of a sudden like these guys are going to like all of a sudden become meek and mild. Like so the death threats started coming right they were betrayed i get that man anybody that's ever been betrayed everybody that's ever been turned on or tricked man they end, like you know what that humiliation feels like and and how insulting it is and embarrassing it is right so um when the when the when the death threats started coming like like it didn't shock me it didn't surprise me what surprised me is that my agency like showed no interest in reacting to them or 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 investigating them or doing anything about it. I was told by an agency that I worked for, dude, these things are too big. They're too massive. There's too many of them. And like, we don't even know where to start. You're on your own. Good luck. Right. I was told like that, and that's like that like they're like, hey dude, you're on your own. Figure it out. Um, so that's crazy. So that's earlier insane. in our conversation, you'd ask me like, you know, um, yeah, after when the threats are happening and um and the case is falling, so I have, like confirmed, apart. confirmed, validated murder contracts being offered on, um, like threats from all over the place that were valid, credible threats. The the people I work for. D didn't uh, didn't have any really interest in in supporting me or helping me resolve that. And in the end, so you asked me like, did I have any inkling that there was, you know, that things weren't good early in our conversation? And I said at that time there was no red flags, right? Yeah. Well, the red flags started showing up, and and that, like the, the best way for me to sum it up is that I love ATF. I did everything I could for ATF. I love ATF. ATF just didn't love me back. 
So there was a firebombing incident, right? That happened after. And do you think that was connected to, to this case? Every indication, every bit of intelligence, every bit of knowledge that we had uh, led any reasonable investigator to, to believe that the Hells Angels either did it or had a hand in it, had a hand in ordering it. Um, and my agency, in order to protect themselves, like doubled down on me and tried to frame me as someone who like lit my own house on fire and which is bad enough as it is but my my wife and my kids were home so that in essence they were alleging that i was willing to murder my own wife and kids and so when, like, when we got to that point the shit was on man i was like you know what like i said atf i loved atf atf just didn't love me back and I was like, okay, like, you know what, if this is the way we're going to play it, then let's go. Isn't it kind of like ironic how these guys feel betrayed by you and then you go and you feel betrayed by your people that you're working for? It's you know like what? poetic well, justice, they call it. <laughs> it is. It is. And, and in hindsight, it took me a while to settle my brain. And to, and to think about it that way. But so I spent my professional life living a lie, selling people that I was someone who I wasn't, uh, living a, a, a false persona as an undercover agent. And I built friendships and I built trust and loyalty. And then I would ultimately betray that in a courtroom, right? Um, my family supported me and there was times when I turned my back on my wife and my kids in exchange for my job and what I was doing, I betrayed my family. So then these threats come back on me and I'm not happy with the way my agency reacts to them. And I felt betrayed by that. And when I looked at it that way, I was like, dude, you have it coming. This is karma, dude. You created this world. You spent your whole life betraying people. And then when you've been betrayed, now you don't like it. Now you're upset about it. You want justice, right? Doesn't work that way, dude. You know, like I got a taste of my own medicine. And you know what, man? I, Stax, I didn't like it, dude. I didn't like what it felt like to be betrayed. Yeah. It, it sucks, man. I hate I hate getting betrayed. That's why I'm really cautious with people. And, um, you know, I'm very leery about people. Well, there's people that, you know, I was responsible for their, uh, at least for their arrest, sometimes their conviction or incarceration, who looked at it the same way I did. Like, how do you like it, dude? How do you like it when you trust someone, when you believe in someone, when you let your guard down, um, and then they turn on you? and make you pay for your loyalty. How's that feel? And you know what? It sucks. Yeah. Can you explain the the fire incident? Like how it happened? Like what like what transpired that day? Yeah, the, you know, um, like I was out of town and um, three o'clock in the morning, my house got lit on fire. But like the one thing they did confirm is that it wasn't an accident. It wasn't like an electrical short or a lightning strike. They confirmed like someone or multiple people came onto your property at three o'clock in the morning and intentionally set your house on fire. So um, you get a phone call and they say, what, your house is burnt? Yeah, and my, my family like, like barely escaped. Like they, they, you know, the house, like they didn't realize that the house was on fire when it was on fire. It was three o'clock in the morning. Everybody was asleep. My son, who was uh, plus or minus 10 years old at the time, actually got woken up by the fire because the window in his bedroom exploded from the heat. Oh, man. And he was like, man, the house is on fire. And he went and grabbed, you know, my wife and woke my wife up and, 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 and got my daughter and they got out of the house. They had some smoke inhalation problems, but like they, 
they watched our house burn the ground. So basically everything you own is burnt now, right? So you're out of town, are well, you? Those people, you know what? There's there's people who don't like me out there who celebrate that. And then I get it. I get it. There's people out there who like enjoy that and and have pleasure like knowing that we got it attacked to that level. Um and 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 lost everything. Um and, and ultimately because I challenged the agency, I lost my career behind it, I lost my reputation behind it. Um, I lost friends behind it. Um, and you know, there's people that say, well, you had it coming. Um, and you know what? Maybe, maybe I did. Maybe, I mean, maybe I did. So nothing came about with the fire investigation. They didn't find anybody. It was, well, they, they, they put their resources in the wrong direction. All the evidence and intelligence and information and, and witness accounts and statements indicated this is where you chase this investigation if you really want to find it the investigators ignored all those things and focused on trying to frame me because <laughs> they they weren't happy with you at this point they're like nah we're gonna um oh man when i stood up to the agency dude like i became public enemy number one did um, you have friends that were close to you turn their back when you did that i did i had some that like just stayed loyal and stuck with me when it was very unpopular thing to do. Um, but I also had a handful of people that um, that I believed in, that I trusted, who like either kept their mouth shut, stepped back, just wanted no part of the truth. And so, but that's part of life, man. You uh, you you find out who's you find out what people's true colors are, not when things are good. But when things are bad. Yeah. Is there any um was there any funny situations that happen that stand out in your head during the investigation with these guys on the bikes? Were there any like damn man, I'll never forget that? Yeah, I mean I think there's lots of them, small ones, bigger ones. Um I think anybody that like I've never tried to portray that my time as an undercover agent like every day was miserable and and terrible like I, I loved my job i loved going to work um and so like did, did i laugh along the way yeah man i did like I, i've never tried to portray that like i threw myself on the sword and i was miserable every day like for the greater good um yeah i had days when i laughed like i said i loved my job every day no one held a gun to my head and made me take any assignment. 